Welcome to... <laughs> Welcome to... I've forgotten the name of the episode. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quickly goes to Spotify to check the episode. Hello and welcome to Experts in Polo Shirts. Today we'll be talking about the death of the sadmin and the role that Azure plays in that. Well, there's some recent developments in this. So the guy that works at Basecamp, who uses a lot of public cloud, I'm pretty sure it's like a project management tool. He's basically come out to say, actually, you know what? Maybe moving to the public cloud wasn't the right idea because actually it's costing us a fortune and we could just buy loads of tin, stand up in the data center and spend way less money. So maybe the future of public cloud is hybrid. Maybe that's using PaaS and basically having infrastructure as a service in a private cloud somewhere that's linked to that and putting stuff in the place that suits best. I think probably that only suits static workloads. So where like customers got some VMs, got an enterprise application, they know that it's a fixed amount of traffic. You know, they've got 5,000 users always using the application. They know that it's going to be like that for three, five years time. So they can go and buy hardware. Always like the, the bursty stuff. I've got 10,000 users for a day. Next day, I've got 50,000. Next day, I've got five. Public cloud's always going to win there because you're not having to buy that infrastructure for when it's quiet. We kind of come into the arc of the renaissance, let's call it, of public cloud, I think, which is this. Let's move everything to public cloud. Public cloud's great. That renaissance is still trending upwards as more people are moving. But I think people are starting now to take a step back, particularly with high inflation, rising data center costs. Actually, are we right to move everything to public cloud? Like a selective over what goes where. And let's do hybrid or multi-cloud. Probably more select hybrid cloud. I think multi-cloud is a bit of a marketing buzzword. Source market is, but it is. Um, so yeah, I think we need to focus on moving what's right to the public cloud and keeping some stuff in private cloud or on-prem. On-prem meaning like a data center somewhere, not someone's office. Public cloud would be like a, a typical enterprise business with like 500 users. So you're going to have a bunch of workloads that are SQL databases. Now you're going to have then a bunch of other application workloads of like maybe in-house developed applications or other apps that perhaps don't suit being moved to like Azure App Service or um, SQL Managed Instance or Azure SQL, for example. And those ones, you're just going to leave them on-prem. You know, it's you have a fixed amount of users, a fixed amount of um, bandwidth usage. You know what you need. You can forecast that. Just leave that on-prem. The stuff that's like you've got a database that says your SQL compatible, you know what, you're probably just best moving that because you can get it much more cost effective in Azure, depending on how much how many transactions it's doing, how much data it's storing. But the thing is, there's not one right answer that is the be all and end all. It's about finding the right solution that comprises of all the assets. I think at the small business scale, you'll find a lot more use of SaaS. So things like Salesforce, Dynamic CRM, hosted services, Office 365. So you're going to find their on-prem workload is going to be quite small. They'll be using things like OneDrive. They won't have a file server, SharePoint, etc. But if you start to move into like the mid markets, probably like 200, 300, 500, 1,000 users, you're going to find there's a lot of servers and systems there that some will suit Azure, some won't. When you get into really big business, you're going to have exactly the same scenario. So it's sort of like SMEs are going to be like probably mainly using SaaS. Mid market and above, it's going to be a mix of SaaS, on prem, Azure. But I think that businesses need to carefully evaluate. Now, sometimes there's operational reasons to move everything to Azure. So you might have like a, a team that knows public cloud, but your team don't know VMware, networks, segmentation, et cetera. Um, and that makes sense then to just put it in Azure. There's no one right answer, there's a load of different answers. And Azure is the, uh, the the public cloud that you'd go to. Microsoft's public cloud, yeah. Yeah. So there's two main players in the market. Well, there's three. In terms of like the hyperscalers, so you've got Google, Amazon, Azure. For us as a business, we used to do a lot of AWS, but we recently in the past, probably like 12 to 18 months, start to lean more towards Azure. And we were waiting for a particular set of capabilities to come along where it made sense to us. And that thing was Azure Virtual Desktop had to support Teams before we would really kind of go all in on selecting that as a platform of choice. And the reason for that is we've got lots of customers using Citrix, using Teams. For us, it's a necessity. If we're delivering hosted desktop, we have to have the ability to use Teams because everyone's using it. And you don't really want to be like, okay, I'm going to use Teams, but I'm going to come out of my desktop 
and use it locally because that's really frustrating. Yeah. How do you feel about it, Michael? I prefer private. <clears throat> I think public has its uses, like, but for me, it's private all the way. Private fanboy. <laughs> you get more control. You manage absolutely everything yourself. And I personally, I find it easier to manage, but that's because I probably know them systems more than public. Yeah. But if you had someone that managed public more, then they come to our stuff and be like, what is going on here? I suppose it's like, you know, you look at VMware, storage vendors, you manage a lot of them through a web page, but it's a different skill set. It's almost like what we do in our private cloud environments is behind the curtain. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. In Azure, you don't see behind the curtain. You just see a web page or a CLI command that you enter. You don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, you know, without wanting to come across as like salesy, but that's like makes like people like us invaluable because we know how all the infrastructure behind the scenes works and we're just applying that same knowledge to the public cloud environment of choice, which for us happens to currently be Azure. This is an interesting shift in like the, the resources that we see from an apprenticeship level. So there's lots of resources come to the, you know, start an apprenticeship and like they want, want to do Azure. There's lots of great content online, you know, to read about Azure, to learn about it. And there's lots of certifications you can get, which is attractive to people coming into the IT industry. But I wonder whether a lot of them would be better getting the foundational knowledge on how traditional infrastructure works, because otherwise they just can't really apply themselves to Azure properly, in my opinion. As you move into that sort of mid-sized, mid-market business, they're probably going to have some stuff in a data center somewhere, some stuff in public cloud. I think perhaps that's where a lot of training providers are going wrong. It's, it's too focused on the Microsoft Azure stack, and they need to probably focus on a range of skills that are beneficial long term i feel like if i did azure first and then come to what we do i'd have no idea what to do but with the stuff that we already do going into azure it's so easy yeah i guess there's a lot of the same principles apply that we know and trust which is extrapolating it although it calls it different things like vnets and effectively just peering is ibgp but yeah like that's that sort of stuff is udrs yeah udrs yeah which are kind of just a VRF in many ways. Well, static routes. A lot of the knowledge we already have is easily turned into Azure stuff. Was that contentious enough for you? No, that's good. Probably wasn't contentious enough, was it? Maybe not contentious at all. I don't no, know. No, okay, right. Basically, don't blow your money on Azure unless you absolutely have to. Why do we think that the, sys the role of the sysadmin role might not look the same in the next five to ten years? Us here, I don't think we're traditional sysadmins though. So it's kind of hard to... No, but um, maybe an in-house sysadmin um, who's taking care of the on-premise stuff. Like, why might he not look the same? He or she, you he or she, they. Pig. Why might they not look the same in, uh, in five to ten years? I feel like with ever go to public cloud, so it's the majority of stuff going to public cloud. A lot of that back-end stuff, the management of actual systems is just disappearing like server 2022 auto patch that's one thing that's just off their plate just straight away nice thing to have off your plate but <laughs> yeah there goes a small part of your job yeah and i suppose the, like, the latest microsoft thing yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a bit of a gotcha though which is that uh, it only supports server core which not that many people are going to be using although it is really good it's you need a level of understanding to use it so yeah, I don't know whether that many people would use server core. I suppose they might bring it to the full version at some point, and then you'll be able to just hot patch, which means no reboots for patching, which means it's it can be completely automated away. Although most advanced organizations have automated away patching anyway. Like we don't really do any patching, it's automated. I suppose the scenario is if 90% of mid-market workloads move to Azure, which I think is a realistic percentage, that sysadmin role that was maintaining loads of spinning disks and flashing lights in a data center somewhere is going to move into a PaaS and potentially IaaS in Azure. And when it does that, learning some of those like DevOps methodologies is going to be really useful. So like the infrastructure is code, ability to deploy stuff from scripts and make life easier and manage states and stuff. That's, you need to mute that. DND. It's, it's your fault. DND, it's not my fault. It's your business. <laughs> Blaming me. Well, we try and repeat the last line, so we just turn off. I don't know what I said. <laughs> just hey, don't, don't just put me. it on DND. Oh, oh, hey Siri. Hey Siri. There we go. Done it. Yeah. Has yeah. that ever happened before? Have you ever put your uh, phone on DND before? Me? No, never. <laughs> I don't sleep. For you everything. can't play on DND with um, our alerts. It overrides it. Does it? Yeah. It's like nah, mate. You're not sleeping tonight. <laughs> Can you even mute it? Can you like no silence your phone? No, fair enough. The call won't ring. 
but you know the pings that gives you no uh, no way of muting them if you're on call I don't remember where we were do you have an iPhone yeah I it doesn't you have an iPhone if you an Android right what can you, you can mute it if, if you had an Android well if I have an Android I probably wouldn't be doing well in life <laughs> oof oof <laughs> any Android users in here no no, no, no okay we're not, not going to offend anyone it's fine Divination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Technically, there's 100 percent Apple coverage in here, and I feel like in the actual office, I think as you get into like more technical people, that dwindles. Yeah, I think well, they be just like 60 percent Apple, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's more like Windows and Android, isn't it? Windows and Android. Because you because you can control it more. Windows right? and Mac. That's the... I feel like that's just because they hate the majority of the population, and the majority has the iPhone, so they go Android. <laughs> I don't know. I think if you want to tweak and modify stuff, I guess Android is a better platform to be on. But we digress from the core point. I think where we were was like, if 90% of of workloads are in Azure, then that sysadmin's going to have to shift what they do. And they're going to have to focus on other stuff. I suspect that seven to 10 years from now, that sysadmin role will look very different because it has to. Because there is going to be a mass adoption of public cloud. And that does require a slightly different skill set. And I think that sysadmin will become to begin to use some of the sort of like typical dev skill set, which is like DevOps infrastructure as code. And that's how I think it will shift. The role's never going to go away. There's going to be companies that 20 years from now don't touch public cloud. They just don't. And that sysadmin will live on in that that environment forever. You know, as applications move to Azure, um, yeah, I think the sysadmin role will change. Not just Azure though, is it? We doubled in it a bit, didn't we? In what? Automation of infrastructure builds and... Yeah, yeah, and I think it's it's a lot harder to do that, I think, on like a VMware type platform. It doesn't really lend itself to being as as nice for that stuff. Whereas obviously in public cloud, you've got a lot of that tooling that gives you a lower time to value. So you can achieve you can achieve like higher value a lot quicker. It's like we'd have to build build this, build that, configure this, do that. In Azure, you can just use stuff that's already there. So you're you can be productive within 30 days doing the infrastructure automation, whereas our platforms that, you know, private cloud environments might be like 60 days, 90 days. All that money, all them devs, and they still can't provision a firewall rule in less than a minute on a GUI. <laughs> so this is the Azure firewall stuff. You save a rule on a web page, and it takes between two and three minutes to save. The reason for that is it's applying it across multiple pieces of infrastructure at the same time, across multiple data centers, but still it shouldn't take three minutes, but it does. And the worst part is every change you make, you have to wait for it to finish unless you use the CLI. So yeah, it's, um, whereas on other normal files like Fortinet, it takes two seconds to save. So yeah, we've been having fun with that. Let's go and delete those three things. Oh, they're in separate groups, right? Delete them one by one. So that's nine minutes, because there's three of them. And then we add three more, that's another nine minutes. So yeah, that's fun and games. It's a lot of free money for me. Because it was overtime, yeah. <laughs> Waiting. Yeah. I get paid to what? wait. In this, guy, this guy gets paid to watch progress bars. <laughs> Not just that, I replaced the roof tiles, I mean, don't they? There's better things to do with your life. Mm, you're getting paid for it, though. What do you do today at work, son? Well, I spent the day um, watching progress bars. <laughs> <laughs> I got paid for it. And apart from uh, watching progress bars, um, what is the skill set? The future infrastructure engineers, network engineers, and developers. I th- you, th- you touched on developers a little bit in the last point. Um, what is the skill set they'll need? I think already developers already need stuff like public cloud in their resume. The ability to automate deployments through CI, CD, so continuous integration, continuous deployment, so that can release small feature advancements every day. And I think that's what you know organizations now of almost any size are trying to achieve, if they're not there already. So that's, that's a now requirement. How does it shift? I suspect that the infrastructure team are going to start to pick up more of that like DevOps automation piece because they'll have to, and they'll have to learn to own that. And I think that's how it changes over time. Peace out. Ouch. I'm going to become a developer. I don't think you become a developer. Just like a fake dev. A fake dev. So that's the terminology we have for like div- people that are infrastructure people. This is not a publicly known, this is an internal thing only. We say that, oh, I'm a fake dev. Because actually, we're not real developers, but we're sort of doing some of the stuff that devs do. So yeah, maybe more people will become fake devs. So the uh, the, the infrastructure engineers and the uh, and the network engineers are going to be fake devs. Fake devs. devs being devs. Yeah, they're not devs being devs, because but they're like fake devs. Yeah. 
because network stuff eventually is going to all probably be controlled through code and you'll change the code in a script. You know, you'll edit a file somewhere in a repository and you'll push that out and say, go and commit that change to my infrastructure. And that gives you the ability to roll it back very easily. So yeah, I think it is like, but you'll need to know networks and you'll need to know code. So yeah, fake dev. Yeah, look at the power of whiskey when you knew both. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah, that's um, fake dev. There we go. See, use case for it. It's the definition of it. It's mine. Thanks for watching Experts in Polo Shirts. If you like today's content, please like, comment, subscribe. I think we're all done then. You can probably get back to work if you need to. We're not chatting for a few minutes. So just can do. Yeah, should... How are you guys enjoying the new room? Yeah, I think it's really good. Stand I like how cosy this is. It's quite cosy. Really, it's cosy. I think once we've got the other room finished off, we can move this in here and have a bit more space to like juggle things around. Yeah. But this is a nice alternate space. Ambiance. Yeah, it's got a good ambiance. I want to see how we control those lights though. Oh yeah, we we need a we need the, the um, program for it. You need to send me it. I don't have it. Oh, don't let him get away with this. Look at him. Didn't didn't uh, didn't the, the electrician send you a, a program for? He was him? going on about how excited he was about that box. Now look at him. He's feigning. Yeah. He's feigning that he knows anything about it. Book it in my calendar for next week, mate. <laughs> and pay you to watch more progress bars. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>